hello friends welcome <laughs> you so did that on purpose to show off your arm <laughs> okay welcome to another video where we're going to explain eric's little accident so if you're new here my name's smiley Ma Okay, we are just going to do this little informal story time-esque video to tell you about a fun little trip to the ER we had this week um, because of Eric's arm. So Eric, what was the inciting incident here? So Miley wanted carbonara for dinner, which mm -hmm. is something that I've made many, many times. And, it's very delish. Uh, everything was done except the pasta cooking. And so I grabbed the pot that the pasta was done, the water was boiling, and brought it over to the kitchen to pour it through the colander that was in the sink. And my hand was kind of wet and I couldn't get a good grip on it. So I went to go put it back on the stove and halfway there, it just slipped out of my hand. And because I was like holding it up, I just dumped all the boiling water all over and all the noodles. It was all over scary. My um, and weirdly, I had the wherewithal to not drop the pot. Like, I set the pot on the stove. I didn't drop it on the floor. And then turned and went to the bathroom to start running it under. Lukewarm water. Because yeah. that's what you're supposed to do if you ever get a really bad burn. Is run it under lukewarm water for, like, 20 minutes. And then, like, don't put anything on it. You can put, like, some aloe vera. Or if you have any sort of, like, yeah. antibiotic burn ointment, you can put that on it. But you basically just kind of got to let it breathe and run it under water. So we talked about what to do. And I was a proponent of let's just go to the freaking ER. It's fine. Yeah. Let's just go just to make sure, just to check it out. He wasn't hurting too badly, but you guys, I mean, you see the covering of his arm and you'd think that like, that's way more than what his burn covers. No, the burn covers that full surface area pretty much. Actually not quite the full surface area. It's yeah. The and the doctor was like, there's a tiny little sliver on the back of his arm where the burn didn't reach. And the doctor was like, that's really good because if it had reached your whole arm and wrapped around your whole arm, this would be a much more serious situation. But thankfully it wasn't. So Eric did not want to go to the ER. In fact, tell them about our little spat. So I just didn't think it was necessary at that point. Like I was running underwater. I didn't see any blistering. It didn't hurt uh, super bad. I mean, obviously it hurt somewhat, but yeah. it wasn't like, oh my God, the pain. Miley called a burn center to ask uh, about what we needed to do. And the guy on the phone was, was very helpful while at the same time not like legally able to tell us what to do. Yeah. But he basically said, obviously you can wait until urgent care in the morning, but they might just, you know, they might not be able to do anything if you went to the, go to the ER, they might not be able to do anything if the burns are severe enough. So it's really up to you all. He was like, great. So we had pretty well decided to wait until the morning and go to urgent care was kind of where we had landed. So Eric was running his um, arm under cold water for 20 minutes as we're talking to the burn people and figuring all this out, deciding what the heck to do. So about 10 minutes in, I go in to start cleaning up the kitchen. And so I start cleaning up. It's a huge mess, you guys. I wish I would have had huge. the thought to take like a picture or take a short video to show you. It was a huge mess. And of course the water went everywhere. And one of our um, pot drawers right under the stove was open a little bit. And so noodles and water got all in that. It splashed everywhere on all of our cabinet surfaces, like everywhere. And it wasn't just water with noodles in it. It was salted water. And salted so, water when you're cooking pasta. <laughs> it makes a big difference. There was salt water everywhere. So oh my like gosh. This. And so by the time I got done cleaning that up, Eric came out and he was like, Okay, I guess let's just, and at that point I was like at my wits end. I was like, well, let's just order pizza or order some food or whatever. Like I'm frustrated. I don't, the carbonara was done. It just needed to be combined with some noodles, the sauce and the veggies and stuff. And so Eric was like, no, let's just put on some more noodles. And so I'm like, no, I'm going to go check the weight on Postmates. So I go and check all the, it's right at dinner time and all the Postmates delivery times are like 40, 50 minutes out. And so we're both starving at this point. It's a lot later, later than we normally eat. And we're like, we don't want to wait. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just put noodles on. It's fine. Go keep running your arm underwater. I'll put noodles on after I finish cleaning up the kitchen. So I put noodles on and the second batch of noodles, right, of the night. And about five minutes into the noodles cooking, 
Eric comes in and continue your story. So I actually come out here and sat down and was like looking up like <laughs> symptoms and like warning signs and things like that. And I had actually read what Miley had referenced the doctor confirming that if the burn is all the way around a limb, it can cut off circulation and lead to like digit or limb loss and stuff like that if it's not treated right, uh, like within hours after the burn and all this stuff. And so I kind of looked at my arm and I couldn't tell like that there was a distinct line where the burn hadn't affected it. So at that point I was like, okay, I think we should go to the ER. And this one, who the whole time early on was like, let's go, let's just go to the ER, it'll be fine. As soon as I'm like, okay, let's go to the ER, she's like, no, I don't know. We can wait until the morning. I wasn't saying wait until the morning. I was saying, do you want to eat dinner first and then go to the ER? Because I put a whole other batch of noodles on. Now this is the second batch of noodles and, we've wasted in addition to our dinner. And also the pain was starting to get more severe. Yeah, that, that was a big thing that I told her is like, I don't want to wait until I'm like at in 10. severe, severe pain mm -hmm. and then we start driving. Yeah. So let's just go now. So we, so we go to the ER and the ER, we now realize we've just moved to a sort of new city. It's kind of a suburb city of the metro area of our big city. Um, and so we have never been to the ER in this location before. And so we were like, where the heck do we even go? So we just typed in the closest ER and went there. And my goodness, it was such a good facility. We were super worried because Eric is a week away from getting his second shot and being fully covered. And like, he doesn't leave the house. And so we were like, great. The one time you're leaving the house is to go to a freaking hospital ER where there's probably going to be COVID patients everywhere. We're walking into a really you know, serious situation. Potentially we walk in, there's no one in the waiting room. It's so quiet. In fact, there's a sign on the door that says this is not a COVID-19 treatment facility. Yeah. So it was a small kind of offshoot, just ER location from a much bigger hospital in the more centralized metro area. So it was literally just an ER. They were so efficient, so like nice, but just to the point, like got things done. They got us in and out in under an hour. I mean, it was the best ER experience we've ever had. Like we will always go there for, um, five out of five. Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would go again. Um, and yes, there's my cute little dog just being a freaking adorable child. I love you, baby. Um, so, and we did take a tiny little video at the, um, hospital. So I'll put that in right here. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, Scrimpy. Hello. What happened? I spilled boiling water on my arm. While we were there, they offered, um, to give me something to deal with the pain. <laughs> And they gave me Norco, which uh, is a narcotics level painkiller. And I was like, yeah, sure. That like, in case this gets worse, no harm in having it. Um, didn't think about the fact, you're zooming in on me. Uh, didn't think about the fact that as this story has been building and building, we still haven't eaten yet. And so I take two, like 350 milligram tablets of Norco which was what they recommended. Like, I didn't yeah. ask for that. They're like, we'll give you two. Um, and so we get to the car and I start getting a little- Just loopy. like a little loopy. Like, I would not describe you as like super loopy. I would describe you as, I couldn't tell if he was just being annoying on purpose or being loopy. And he was being loopy, obviously. But it was like 8.30 by that point, maybe. We hadn't eaten, but they had written him two prescriptions, one for the burn ointment and one for um, another- round of pain medication and so they had called in the pain medication to the nearest 24-hour pharmacy which happened to be like 25 minutes away and they gave us a paper prescription for some reason for the ointment and so we're like okay let's just drive the 25 minutes we'll go through a drive through eat something for dinner and pick up the medication and then go home so we drive and I tell her we're picking up a prescription for Eric Strimple and here's this paper prescription. And she's like, okay, do you just want to come back? And I was like, well, how long would it take? And she was like, it'll be about 20 minutes. And I was like, okay, great. Yeah, we'll come back. We go find a random like fast food um, place, place eat and in eat in the car. And then we go back to the pharmacy and we pick up the prescription and she just gives us the ointment. And we're like, 
oh, was there not another um, prescription? And she was like, no, I don't have anything else on him. And I was like, okay, so we just drove to fill this ointment prescription that we don't need until tomorrow because we thought the pain meds were already called in at this 25 minute away pharmacy yeah. no. at 9.30 at night now. Um, and so it was just like this whole disaster of an evening where we drove 25 minutes away to a pharmacy that we didn't need to drive to. We had some drama at dinner and it was just like a frustrating experience, but not because of the hospital staff or your experience in the ER. Like you would no, think, you know, good. normally it's like a three, four hour wait at the ER. It's just like super slow and annoying, but that was not our experience. It was incredibly efficient. It was just the rest of the night that was kind of full of crap. But so how are you feeling now, Scrimpy? I'm starting to get a little itchy. Um, I think it's hitting that like post sunburn phase where it's going to start itching and peeling, but yeah, it feels fine. It's still a little tender, but I'm, we're keeping it wrapped mostly to prevent like infection or anything. Cause there are some blisters that have started to, uh, pop, to pop and stuff like that. So, so we took an update where we show you the actual arm, like when it was at the height of its badness here. So I'll insert that here for you to see. If you want to see, if you don't want to see, just skip forward until you don't see so that. So back in this room. <laughs> Let's see your arm. So there's light blistering all over now. Okay, you can still see it's like totally red and his his hair is like stuck to his skin because of all the ointment and stuff we have to put on it. But then on the wrist, dang. Oh! Got one big blister. God, that's horrid. There, were some, there was some blistering up here that has gone down, which is nice, mm -hmm. but yeah. I just want to pop that so bad you people have no stinking idea the the nurse specifically said i know which is why i'm not doing it but like look at that that is just like jive freaking enormous so wow that was crazy right <laughs> look at how wacky my arm you guys don't even know how much i want to pop those blisters like so bad so when we were in the er the nurse said uh because the blisters had started to come up in my wrist she was like now, don't mess with these. Just let them do their thing naturally. Uh, don't pop them or anything. And I almost turned to Miley in the moment when that nurse was talking. this, like, you, do you hear that? <laughs> I waited until the car before. <laughs> I love all things like... Popping. and Pus-filled, popping, zits, cysts, all the things. I know I'm super freaking weird. Um, but anyway, that's the story. So we had a lovely, lovely night um, taking care of Eric and his poor little arm. So he's doing much better now and uh, you're on the road to recovery. I bet we'll only have to wrap it a couple more times and then you'll probably be good to go. Once all those blisters kind of subside and dry out, it'll just be managing it, keeping it clean, making sure it doesn't get infected. So that's the story. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe Smash to our it. channel if you want to see more of our videos. Go check them out and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.